Okay, today we're going to be talking about the quadratic formula. Uh, and as usual, here are the examples we're going to be using in this particular lecture. Now, the quadratic formula is, in my opinion, probably the most important section in this class. And the reason why is because of how much this comes up in other classes. You're going to be using this all the time in uh, in college algebra, you're going to be using it all the time in calculus. You're even going to be using it in a few sections of trig. Um, it's just it's pretty much never going to go away. It's an extremely useful way to solve quadratic equations. Um, and in in most cases, I'd say it's probably the easiest way to solve a quadratic. And the reason why is because it's the most straightforward way to solve it. And the the thing that's really nice about the quadratic formula is it will always work. Um, as long as you have a quadratic formula, the quadratic equation will always work. So, we've seen a quadratic equation before, but let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just review it quickly. So, the standard form of the quadratic equation is going to be x squared, or sorry, a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Now, let's go move that up a little bit. Okay, now, a quadratic equation, for one thing, is always going to have the highest power is going to be, sorry, the highest power of x is going to be two. Um, and you're not going to have anything, you're not going to have anything higher, you're not going to have an x cubed anywhere, you're not going to have an uh, you're not going to have just x, like if it had a x cubed in front of this, then it wouldn't be a quadratic. If, it, if this x squared were gone, then it wouldn't be a quadratic. Uh, the point being uh, that you need to recognize when you can use the quadratic equation, uh, quadratic formula, I should say, and also um, that you need to understand that to use the quadratic equation, b and c don't necessarily need to be there. B, b could be zero, which means you're not going to have this term, and c could be zero, which means you're not going to have that term. But you can still use the quadratic formula. Okay, but now that I've talked about that, let's go ahead and go on to what the quadratic formula is. The quadratic formula is a formula that we can, it's just a big equation involving a, b, and c, that we can um, that we can evaluate and it'll give us two solutions for x usually two sometimes just one but uh, usually it's going to give you two solutions for for x so this is how it goes x equals negative b and it's going to be you can already see there's a fraction bar plus or minus remember that it's going to give us two different solutions so you have a plus or minus plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times four ac four times a times c all over two a now you might think where on earth did this come from well the to show you how this works i would need to go into something called completing the square which is something that we're going to that I'm, I'm going to do it in another video, but completing the square was something from 9.1 that we skipped. Um, so I'm, I think I'm, if I had, if I get around to it, I'm going to make another video that shows you why the quadratic why the quadratic formula works. But for now, uh, and in practice, the it's best to just to to know it and to know how to use it. You don't necessarily need to know where it came from. Now, this is going to be one. Of, this is going to be something that you're going to want to memorize. You can, you, I mean, you can write it down and you can reference it, and you can, you know, write it down in your notes for your, for um, the quiz or test, so that you can reference it during the quiz or test. But even so, uh, you're going to want to have this memorized. And the reason I say that is because of how often it comes up in other classes. Um, so let's go ahead and go straight into an example this is an another one of those things like many other things in algebra I think the best way to learn it is by example 
So let's say, for example, I'm going to leave this up here for now. Let's say, for example, we have x cubed squared, excuse me, not cubed. If it was cubed, then we would not be able to use the quadratic formula. So x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. Uh, let's go a little more space there. Okay, x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. Okay, let's identify what our a, b, and c is. Okay, what's a? I'm going to write it over here. Okay, a is whatever is going to be in front of the x squared term. Now, we don't have actually anything visibly in front of it, but remember that there's an understood 1. So, a equals 1. Now, what's our b going to be? B is whatever is in front of uh, the x to the first term. So that means B is going to be 3. And C is whatever has no x term. That's this right here. So that means we have C equals negative 18. Now, the reason why I say negative 18 is because you have a minus 18 here. So let's go ahead and erase this stuff because it's in the way. Okay. So we have A, we have B, we have C. Now we just plug it straight into this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have um, X equals negative B and negative B is going to be negative 3 and then plus or minus plus or minus b square oh sorry square root of b squared b like i said is 3 minus 4 times uh, a is going to be 1 times c which is going to be negative 18 all over 2 times 1 okay i want to go over this one more time all I did was I thought, okay, I, I found out what the A, B, and C is, and, and if that's confusing, you know, scroll back, scrub back and you'll be able to see how I got that. A is the first, first term, the coefficient for the first term. B is the coefficient for the second term. C is the coefficient for the last term. Well, not really coefficient, but it, it is the last term. Um, so then, X equals negative B negative b, negative b, because b is, is 3, so negative b will give you negative 3, plus or minus b squared, b is 3 again, so 3 squared, minus 4, is, what, is this right here, a, and c, c is negative 18. Okay, all over to a, so let's go ahead and get rid of that just so we can... I don't want to get rid of this stuff over here just yet. Uh, we're actually done with it, but still, I, st I still want to keep it easily seen. So we have... Um, let's clean up the inside of this a little bit. So we'll have... x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 9 minus... Okay, so... I think I did something wrong. I'm not, oh, here we go. I typed something in wrong. Um, so we have um, four times sorry negative four times one times negative eighteen. Neg this negative here and this negative here becomes positive. So that means we have four times one times eighteen, or just four times eighteen, which will be seventy-two. Uh, that also means I already wrote a negative here, but I'll change it to a plus. Plus, what did I say already? 72. So 4 times 18 is 72, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1, or just 2. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and erase this, but I still want to keep this over here. So let's scroll down just a little bit. Okay, so... Um, that means that 9 plus 72 is going to give you 81. So we have fraction, um, negative 3, 
plus or minus square root of 81 over 2. And of course, square root of 81 is going to equal, I forgot to put the equal sign in front, that's going to equal negative 3, negative 3, I actually typed negative 1 at first, plus or minus 9 over 2. The square root of 81 is 9, that's where I got that. And now, we can separate this into two different problems and simplify from there. So, let's talk about, let's talk about the first one. We have x equals negative 3 plus 9, oops, I accidentally put plus 0, plus 9 over 2, x equals negative 3 plus 9 over 2, that's going to equal um, 6 over 2, because negative 3 plus 9 is 6, and then 6 over 2 is just going to be 3. Okay, so that's the first one, that's the plus. Now let's go to the next one. So x equals negative um, 3 minus 9 over 2. So negative 3 minus 9 is going to be equal to negative uh, 12. So negative 12 over 2 which is going to give you negative 6. So that means our two answers are you know what I'm I'm done with that. I don't know why I kept kept it up there. So so that means I'm going to clean up my answer just a little bit just to make it, you know, in the form of an answer. So we have x equals 3 or x equals -6. So this is going to be our final answer. And this is the new way to do it, using the quadratic equation. Uh, we could have actually done this. This is, a, this is one example where it is actually going to be easier to factor than to use the quadratic equation. Uh, now, there's a lot of cases where it's going to be a lot easier to use the quadratic formula. Um, and primarily because it's so straightforward. You know that's exactly what you have to do. You have to put it into that formula and you're going to get these exact answers. Uh, as opposed to trying to figure out how can I factor all this junk out. Um, but, I mean, if you if you want to see exactly why that works out, I mean, you, you, can, you can factor this out and you'll see that you'll get the same answers. You'll get x equals 3 and x equals negative 6. But for now, um, you, you can do that as if you, if you don't believe me, you can try that out and you'll see that it, you get the same thing. But now let's go on to an example where you have to use the quadratic equation um, unless you want to use completing the square, which you know we skipped. So something that we can't factor. So here's an example of something that we can't factor. x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. So we need to figure out let's, let's look, need to move that up a little bit. Okay, so we can't factor this. We can try, but it won't work. Um, it'll be very, very difficult. And the reason why is because we're going to have an irrational uh, answer. So, um, the only way we can do this is by putting it straight into the quadratic formula. So remember, I'm going to go write this over here. Our a, just like before, is equal to 1, because we have understood 1. Our b is equal to 3, and our c is equal to negative 2. So now let's go ahead and put this into the quadratic equation. So we have x equals negative b. So negative b is just going to be negative 3, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4, oh, I, I actually just wrote in b instead of 3. 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2, all over 2 times 1. Okay, so you can see that, you know, I, 
obviously I've done this enough times that I have the um, the quadratic formula memorized. I, I will say this much. Um, ten years ago, a little over ten years ago, whenever I first started using the quadratic formula, um, the teacher that taught it to me actually taught us an easy way to memorize it, and that is to sing it to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Now, I'm not going to sing it here, so don't ask, but um, to this day, over ten years later, whenever I do the quadratic formula, the tune to Pop Goes the Weasel does go through my head. So yeah, maybe you can find on YouTube someone singing Pop Goes the Weasel for the, for the quadratic formula. Uh, but if that helps, you can do that. Uh, you know anything that helps you, if if you want to, you know, sing it to the tune of your favorite Metallica song or whatever. Anything that helps you to to memorize this would be very useful. Pop goes the weasel just happens to fit really well, surprisingly well. So now we have. I want to clean up the inside of this right here. So we have x equals. Of course, we still have the negative three plus or minus the square root, and this is the part that we need to clean up. 3 squared is going to give you 9, minus, okay, this negative and negative becomes a positive, so plus 8, plus 8 all over, and 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So, now we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit further to negative 3 plus or minus square root of 17 hopefully this won't, ah, uh, just barely fits in there all over 2 and you know what, I'm, I'm done with this part now because I, I only needed this to plug it into the quadratic equation so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and erase it um, so 3, negative 3 plus or minus root 17 over 2 and as you can see that's not something something that we could have factored. You know that would have meant that we would have had um, x plus negative three plus root seventeen over two uh, the times blah blah blah. I mean that would have been a weird thing to factor out. That's so. That's why the quadratic formula is so useful. So we have negative three plus or minus root seventeen over two. So this is going to be our final solution. Now we can separate this. Remember from the last section we talked about when and when when you can and when you can't separate this. This is an example where you can't separate this into, I mean, you can separate it into, say, x, x equals negative 3 plus root 17 over 2, or x equals negative 3 minus root 17 over 2, but, it would, but you couldn't simplify it any further, so that means that this is a perfectly fine solution. If you want to go ahead and separate that out, then that's fine. Uh, so that concludes that particular section, that particular example, sorry, we, sh we still got a little ways to go in this section but we have another example we have three more examples actually I believe yes we have three more examples of this inside this video um, so here's something that we could kind of factor out but it would be a huge pain uh, it, it would be a, a mental exercise to say the least uh, equals zero now we could factor this out if we wanted to but it would be weird so it'll be a lot easier to use the quadratic equation so we see that x equals now I'm gonna go ahead and write out what our a b and c is a is equal to 1 again more often than not your a will equal 1 but don't let that fool you into a false sense of of complacency I guess a will sometimes not be 1 so b equals 3 and C equals uh, 9 fourths. And actually, we could modify this problem so that you get, um, if you wanted to, you could multiply across by 4 if you want to not use this fraction here. And I can understand that if you don't want to use a fraction. You can multiply both sides of the equation by 4. You'll get 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals 0. Now I'm not going to do that now, um, just because I want to go ahead and use it, use the quadratic equation directly. But uh, just if that interests you, you know, you don't have to do that. But I thought I'd go ahead and throw it out there. So x equals negative b 
plus or minus negative, I actually wrote out B, I did not mean to write out B. B is 3, so x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of B squared, B squared is going to be 9, minus 4 times A times This might run into this. Ah, just barely fits in there. Okay, so negative three plus or minus the square root of b squared because b b squared is three squared, which is nine, minus four times a times c. So we can ignore this one because anything multiplied by one is itself. But also notice something else. We have four times nine fourths, so the fours will cancel. Uh, oh, also still over 2a. Now 2a is going to be 1, so I'm just going to write 2. Okay, so now let's write this as... Okay, so we have negative 3 plus or minus square root of 9... Oops, not 9j. There's no j in this problem. 9 minus 9 is what's left. All over 2 still. So 9 minus 9 is just going to give you 0. So this is equal to um, negative 3 plus or minus square root of 0 over 2. Okay, and the square, square root of 0 is just going to be 0. So that means we have square root of, not square root, sorry, negative 3 plus or minus 0 over 2. Now, when you add 0 or subtract 0, you get the exact same effect. Because negative 3 plus 0 will be negative 3 negative 3 minus 0 will be negative 3. So that means that we're actually only going to have one solution because this is not going to, no matter whether this is positive or negative, it doesn't actually change anything. So that means the answer is going to be negative 3 halves. And of course if you wanted to, and just for, just for kicks I'll go ahead and do that, you can put the negative out front so you'll have negative 3 halves. Um, it doesn't really matter though. So that means that this is going to be our final solution to the problem. And we did that. Remember, we could have done this using the. We could have factored this out, and we would have gotten that this set part right here is equal to x plus 3 halves quantity squared. Of course, that would equal 0, so that means that x has to equal negative 3 halves. We could have done it that way, but you know, when you, when you see that negative in there, that kind of throws you off. It, th it throws me off, at least. So I prefer to go ahead and just uh, rewrite this as using the quadratic equation. It, it's just, it's easier in the mind to think, instead of, instead of thinking what different ways could I do to solve this, I just think, okay, well I know one way that'll solve it. It'll work every time. So, that's the quadratic equation. So, um, like I said, this will be the final answer. It will be just one answer in this case. Let's go on to another example. This is going to be the first example where a is not equal to 1. We have two more examples, this one and one more after this. So, let's say we have 15x squared plus 19x minus 56 equals 0. Now, you can't see it by immediately looking at it, but this actually can be factored out. But, you know, like I said, you can't see it by immediately looking at it. So you'd have to spend, you know, 20 minutes trying to figure out what different things could you multiply together to, to get this and to get this that add together to make this. And, oh, it's a nightmare. So it would be easier, a lot easier, to just think, okay, instead of figuring out how to do that, I'm just going put to put it straight into the quadratic equation. So, uh, I'm going to try to give myself a little bit of extra room this time. A, in this case, is going to be 15. B, 
is going to be 19. And C, don't forget the negative here, it's going to equal negative 56. And I just realized that every example I've used has, that's not, that's messy. Negative 5, 6. It's a little small, but you can still see it. Um, every example I've had has C, C be a negative number, but, you know, any one of these could be negative. Uh, now, if A is negative, then it'd be a little, just a little bit easier to go ahead and multiply across by negative 1 both sides just to make A positive, but you don't need to. So, A is 15, B is 19, C is negative 56. Okay, so now that I know this, if I wanted to, I could just, cr I mean, I don't need to, there's no reason to do it, but if I were to cross that out, I have everything I need to now to solve this, but, I mean, like I said, there's no real reason to cross it out, unless you're really hate the problem or something, I don't know. Um, so, now let's say that we... Let's go ahead and plug it directly into the quadratic equation. Quadratic formula, sorry. So x equals negative b, so we... negative 19 plus or minus square root of b squared, that's going to be 19 squared. So you can kind of already see that this is going to be a problem that involves the calculator because 19 squared, I, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I mean, I could do it by hand, but I sure don't want to. Um, so 19 squared minus 4 times a, which is going to be 15, times c, which is going to be negative 56. So x, let's say b squared minus 4 times a times C all over 2A and 2A will be 2 times uh, 15. Okay, so I'm going to want to go ahead and simplify this a little, just a little bit. So we're going to have uh, equals negative 19 plus or minus Okay, so we want to simplify the inside of the square root. 19 squared is actually going to be 361. And, you know, you could do that by hand. It would be easier to do it by a calculator. Um, so now we have 4 times 15 times negative 56. Well, I do know at least so far that this negative, this negative will make a positive. That won't always happen. I mean, every example we've had so far, well, not every example, there was one that didn't. But you're going to see that quite a bit. Um, a lot of times you'll see that your C is negative, so that makes this plus, but um, that's not always going to be the case, so just be aware that it's going to happen sooner or later that that won't, that you're still going to have a minus here. Uh, so 361 minus, okay, so 4 times 15 times 56, I put that in my calculator and I got 3360. So 361 minus 3360 over 2a, 2 times 15, which is 30. Okay, so now we want to say that we want to go ahead and ju just a little bit more simplification. Oops, I, I... Okay, so this is equal to negative 19 plus or minus uh, square root square root of 361 minus 3360. That's going to be 3721. Okay, and now you're going to be able to definitely see all this slow over 30. Now you're definitely going to want to use a calculator because I don't have a clue what the square root of, three, of 3721 is. Um, I don't even know how you would do it by hand. It'd be a nightmare. So, that means that this is going to... I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do this on the same line. So that means you'd have the fraction of negative 19 plus or minus. I put it in my calculator, and I get that that is equal to 61 over 30. So let's do the plus case first, where we have x equals negative 19 
plus 61. Okay, negative 19 plus 61 will give you 42. So 42 over 30, which reduces to 7 fifths. So this is going to be our first answer, but we're not quite in the answer phase yet. So this this next part is going to be x equals um, negative 19 minus 61 minus, notice that it's the minus now, over 30. And negative 19 minus 61 will give you negative 80. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We'll give you negative 80 over 30. And then negative 80 over 30 is going to be equal to negative 8 thirds. So that means that we have that uh, x equals 7 fifths or x equals negative 8 thirds. And I'm going to go ahead and write it on that, we'll clear that, write it on the next line. So we'll have x equals 7 fifths or x equals negative 8 thirds x equals 7 fifths or x equals negative 8 thirds. So uh, that is going to be our solution for this problem. But now let's go into something very different. Remember that I said the quadratic formula applies, uh, it's, it can be used in any case. So what if we have a problem, let's, let's go ahead and Go to a new example. What if our problem looks like this? Four fifths x squared equals x. This is pretty different from what we've seen so far because normally we have it in ax squared plus bx hope we're going to have enough room, plus c equals zero. Normally we have it in this form, uh, but it's not there in that, in that case. So we have four-fifths x squared equals x. Well, we don't even have a c, as you can, as you can tell, because a c is a term without an x. So let's go ahead and let's try to get this as close to this as we can. So, So, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and subtract x from both sides. So we'll have 4 fifths x squared minus x equals 0. Okay, so we're a little bit closer because you have 4 fifths x squared minus x equals 0. Now, so we have an ax squared and we have a bx. We don't have a c though. But all that means is that we can say that c is equal to zero. So the first thing we want to do is want to get this as close as we can to standard form. Then, um, then we can go ahead and solve it. So since c is zero, so we can, we, if we wanted to, we could say this as as um, four fifths x squared minus x plus zero equals zero. Uh, if that helps, you can do that. You don't need to, but um, but if you know if that helps to make it more clear as to why this fits this, then you can. There's one more thing I'd like to do. This is not really necessary, but it will it, it'll make things just a little bit easier. I'm going to multiply every individual piece by five. That way, I won't have this fraction here anymore. So. And um, I'm also I'm going to get rid of this, 
So instead, at this the this c equals zero. So instead of uh, four fifths x, this will be four x squared. All I'm doing is multiply multiplying both sides of the equation by five. This is not necessary though. You can put put this directly into here. A equals four fifths. You can do that, and it'll still work. I'm just doing that to make life just a little bit easier. So four x squared minus five x equals zero. So that means we have a equals four and b equals negative five. And of course we already know that c equals zero. Um, now I want to go through this one more time. And the reason why is because this is an unusual problem. You have a problem where this is not yet in the correct form that we need it to be in. Um, it's we have you know we we want it to look sort of like this it doesn't look like that so we want to combine like terms you want to make all our x squared terms over here then our x to the first terms and then our um, non x terms and that's what we did you know we, you, and so this is this is in the form a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Of course your plus c is going to be plus zero. That's kind of hard to see. I'm just going to erase that. Uh, so, so that, okay, so anyway, um, now this part, this is also in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, but you're going to have different a different a, a different b, and a different c, um, but it, it'll still come out to the same solution. And again, I just did that because it's going to make it a little bit easier to solve it. And I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that. So, x x equals negative b. So, negative b is going to be negative negative 5, which is just going to be positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. It's going to be 25 because negative 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times um, a which will also be 4 times c, c which will be 0 whoops I, I, I you know like I said before this is a, a markup language and if you've ever used a markup language and you type something wrong then sometimes some really weird stuff could happen so I typed something wrong and instead of getting 4.0 I got 4 then 0 with a dot over it which is completely different from what I wanted <laughs> so I don't even know that that dot has something to do with physics so so don't don't worry about that um, all over 2a and of course 2a is going to be equal to 8 2 times 4 will give you 8. And of course, this 4 times 4 times 0, anything times 0 is 0, so we just cross that out. So we have that x equals... By the way, I don't even know what the answer is yet. I, I kind of... I, I I'm doing this as I go along. This is... Um, what's the word? Ad-libbed? So yeah. <clears throat> so this is going to be 5 plus or minus... 5, I mean, can you see that? So we'll have just, it's square root of 25. So we'll have 5 plus or minus 5 over 8, which is going to equal uh, 10 over 8, which will be 5 fourths. So x equals, I'm going to go ahead and, I'm not going to skip that step, 10 over 8. 5 plus 5 will give you 10, which is going to be 5 fourths. Or, alternatively, um, x equals 0 over 8. Ah, it's... I'm going to have to rate clear all this, but you know what? I don't think we need it anymore anyway, so. X equals 0 over 8, which is just going to be 0. 
So our two solutions are x equals 5 fourths or x equals 0. Okay, so solution is too low. So x equals 5 fourths or x equals 0. Okay, let's see if uh, if the solutions manual says the same thing. I'm not even sure what problem that was. X equals 5 fourths or x equals 0. Cool. So, um, you can kind of see how the quadratic equation, equation, even when it looks as funky as this, you can still use it and still work out the same way. Uh, I'm going to try to do, I, was, I was, wasn't going to do any more examples, but I want to do one more that has it where it's not quite in the right form. Um, so, there, there's not a lot of these that we'll actually be working on, but um, there's a few. Let's see if I can find... Oh, oh, here's, here's a good one. This is not at all in the quadratic form at the beginning, but it still works out. Um, and uh, it's gonna give you it's gonna give you kind of a strange answer, but it'll still work out. So okay, so we have three x squared minus twelve. Three x squared minus twelve minus two x equals 2x times x minus 1. Okay, so this is obviously really different from our typical ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It's not even close to that. So we're going to have to do a lot of uh, distributing. We're going to have to do a lot of um, combining like terms and things like that. Uh, but it, it, it'll be kind of tedious, but it's, it's good practice. So first thing we want to do, okay, I'm going to go ahead and write up here. We want it to look sort of like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And we have no idea what a, b, or c will be, but of course we know what x is because it's just going to be x. So, um, and also note, of course, that this, this doesn't necessarily have to be x, it can be y. I mean, like, um, there are other problems where we use y instead of x, but it means the same thing, because you're still using the, quadra you're still using the quadratic. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, uh, first thing we see is, we see some stuff outside of parentheses, so we can distribute. So let's start over here. So we'll have 3x squared minus 3 times 12, which should be 36. 3x squared minus 36 minus 2x equals, and then we want to distribute the, the 2x, so we'll have 2x squared minus 2x. And uh, this is another example where I'm, I'm ad-libbing, so I hope I don't make any mistakes. Now we want to subtract 2x is from both sides. We want to get, well, what I'm trying to do is, now that I've distributed everything that could be distributed, I want to get all of my terms on the left side of the equation. So, that means I want to subtract 2x from both sides, I'm sorry, 2x squared, and you can subtract 2x squared from this side too, 2x squared, and that'll give you Um, x squared minus 36 minus 2x. Yeah, oh, let's get a little more room there. Wow, that's a lot more room. Okay, minus 2x equals negative 2x. Because all I've done so far is I've, I've subtracted the negative 2x squared from both sides. Now I want to get rid of this here. So I'll say this is plus 2x. So plus 2x, and I'm probably going to have to put a lot of extra space in between here too. So that means we're going to have x squared 
minus 36 equals 0. Okay, now you're probably immediately thinking, oh, I can solve that. That's pretty easy because, and, and this, will, this will work, but for the sake of this example, we want to use the quadratic equation. But also remember that this is going to be equal to x plus 6 times x minus 6 because you have a difference of two squares. So x plus 6 times x minus 6 equals 0. Um, this, will, this will work, but the reason I'm showing you all this is because to get it in a form that we can use the um, quadratic equation. And now this is it. This is, this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. But your b is going to be 0. So you have a equals 1, b equals 0, and c equals negative 36. So now let's go ahead and solve this using the quadratic equation and you'll see that we get the same result that we get here x equals negative 6 or x equals positive 6 so x equals negative b or negative 0 plus or minus the square root of b squared 0 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is negative 36 I did something wrong here. I'm not sure what it was. Huh. That's strange. Let's see if I can figure this out. Ah, I see now. Oops. Okay, here we go. So, x equals, and of course there's the 2a, which I'm just going to write as 2, because 2 times 1. So, x equals negative 0, plus or minus, square root of 0 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 36. Okay, notice you have plus, I'm just sorry, you have minus, minus makes plus. So, um, I'm going to, just to get a little bit more room, um, going to erase this stuff. The, the, you can kind of see the, the marks that I make with the mouse like this, they don't move with the rest of the document. So that's why I'm kind of careful about this stuff. Okay, so you can see that, obviously that plus is not going to work anymore. So we have, um, I'm going to lessen the room here too. Okay, that gives us a lot more room. So we have, go back to this, you have plus, oh, plus, minus, minus makes plus, plus. So we have that x equals, now to simplify this quite a bit, negative zero, you know, you can leave that off. So that's just going to be plus or minus the square root of zero squared, we can leave that off. Um, four times thirty-six. So four times thirty-six is going to be one forty-four over two. Okay, so let's figure out what the square root of one forty-four is. Uh, oh, well, we know what the square root of one forty-four is. It's twelve. So that means we have plus or minus 12 over 2. So that means that x is equal to plus or minus 6, which is what we got here too. We got that x plus 6 times x minus 6 equals 0, so x equals negative 6, or x equals plus 6. And we got the same thing here, x equals plus or minus 6. So this is an example where you don't already have it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, but you can still use the quadratic equation to solve it. Now, there is actually another kind of subsection to section 9.2. 
um, involving the discriminant, but I'm going to leave that to the next video because it's kind of a strange topic in and of itself. Um, so I will see you in the next video.